So in this video sequence, we'll be talking about the different systems that are offered on algorithmictrain.net. We'll be looking at the swing trader, the crusher, the pro trader, the wave trader, and I'll be walking you through all the different algorithms that are in each one of these systems. All right, so before we jump into the systems and the algorithms that are traded within them, let me just throw up this disclaimer and remind everyone that trading futures involve substantial risk of loss. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. Remember, I'm not a CTA, nor is my company. Uh, we are a third-party developer, and um, I think that's the main thing. But also, you know, you can pause this, this screen, but just remember that this brief statement, it really can't disclose all the risk associated with commodity futures trading. So just keep that in mind as well, and let's go ahead and jump on to the next slide. Okay, so if you've watched the video that we did on our design methodology, you know that I, I mentioned something called hero states and then villain states as well. The reason why we have those is really just a way to identify each trading algorithm so that we can highlight if it's good in a down moving market, an up moving market, or a sideways moving market. But what I want to do is, is I want to show you first the, the algorithms that are within the swing trader algorithm. So what I decided to do is, remember, we have four systems that we offer. Each system has multiple algorithms contained within it. And what I thought I would do is just walk you through each of the six trading algorithms. And then as they come up, show you how they piece together into one of the trading systems. So hopefully that's a, a hopefully that makes sense. But so we're going to start with the momentum TY. It's, it's the first algo that we have. The reason why I'm starting with that one is because it's traded in all four systems. So all four systems have this algorithm in it. And again, it's the momentum TY. It trades the 10 year note. And what I want to show you here is you'll see this chart on the top is the 10 year and on the bottom is the S&P. And this period is between September and December of 2018 and then January of 2019. The reason why I'm showing you this period is I wanted to show you when the S&P is going lower, what the 10 year typically will do. So the 10 year does have an inverse correlation to the S&P. So what that means is when the S&P is going lower, usually the 10 year will be rallying. Um, it's not always the case. It's, it's not a 100% negative correlation, but I, I believe it's about negative 32%. So the, the majority of the time it is inversely correlated. But in this period is a period where the S&P is going lower. Notice how the 10 year rallied and we actually had a winning trade that you'll see right in here that we got out um, kind of in, in uh, early December of 2018. And then we jumped right back in, got back out over here, which would have been kind of mid-December. And then we jumped right back in. And then at the end of this period, we were still long that 10-year note uh, contract. So again, I'm, I'm showing you so that you can see as the S&P goes lower, usually the 10-year will rally. And that's, by the way, how we tend to do well in down moving markets. So that moves me to this box here that shows the momentum TY, its hero states, in other words, its states where it does the best are the strong down cases and the sideways cases. So again, what that means is if the S&P closes down four points or more in any given month, then usually this algorithm will, will do very well. And if the S&P closes between down four and possibly up 30 points, in other words, it moves sideways for a month, this algorithm will also tends to do well. So, so the, only, the only case where this algorithm can struggle a bit is when you have a strong up moving market, which is the third case. And, and it's not the hero state, which is why it's not shown here. So ho hopefully that makes sense. And, it, and if that confuses you, just I recommend you watch the video I did on design methodology where I talk more about this. But basically what we're saying is the momentum TY is one piece of the puzzle that goes into all four algorithms that we offer. And, and I'll go on to the next algo and, and show you the, one of the others. But um, it, it tends to do well in the, in the strong down and the sideways cases. And then when the market's going higher is when it can struggle. All right, so what this slide is showing is the second algorithm that's in this swing trader system. And it's the momentum ES algo. And by the way, this algorithm is actually not only in the swing trader, but it's also in the pro trader and the S&P crusher. What this algo does though, is when the S&P is going higher, um, this algorithm tends to do really well. 
Also, if the market is going sideways, which is why the two hero states are the case two, which is sideways, and case three, which is strong up. And notice if you look over here, you see the, a chart of the S&P, and this is really between November, December, and then January of, 29, of uh, 2020, actually over here. But what this is showing is as the S&P goes higher, this algorithm tends to do really well. And you can kind of see, I mean, it had a really nice trade in here, another winner right here, right here, right here. And as you kind of march forward, you'll see a lot of these uh, teal dotted lines, which means they were winning trades. So bottom line though, this algorithm momentum, yes, it goes along the S&P and it tends to do well in sideways moving markets and then also strong up moving markets. Strong up, by the way, is defined as S&P closing up 30 points or more for any given month. Okay, so when you put them together, you have the swing trade trading system. And so here I'm trying to represent that by showing the momentum TY, the first algo that we looked at, and then the momentum ES, the, the other one that we just finished. When you put those together, again, you have the swing trade or trader system. So it trades two algos. It has very high returns compared to the other algo systems that we have. Because again, these, these, uh, these bubbles are only meant to represent the strengths as it pertains to the other algos that we offer, not in some more general sense. So the returns are higher on the, the swing trade than some of the other algos that we offer. The drawdown is also a little bit better. It's not the best, but it, it's it's decent on this algo. That's why it's it's covering more than half. Uh, so so again, the 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 more yellow doesn't mean that it has a bigger drawdown. It actually means it has a smaller drawdown compared to some of the other algos. Same with the win rate. It's got a, a higher win rate compared to the others, um, but it does trade too. So some people uh, that would be something that that might be concerning when you compare it to the other algos we have at least. But then it began live in 2017, which is great. Um, so it's traded live uh, in uh, really for over three years now. The unit size is 20,000. So what that means is to trade one unit, you need an account of about 20,000. Now the reality is you can get away with a little bit lower than that. In fact, the 20,000 allows us to have a very significant drawdown without you having to add funds to the account. So the summary of this algo is that it's got very high returns. Um, it does have a higher potential for drawdown, but still is, is decent. And then it has a long live trade history. So here I just have the monthly performance. And this is a sum up performance, meaning the year to date is just the sum of all the, of all the individual months. But you can, you can kind of get a feel. So in 2019, which, which was a really good year for us, it had a down month in February, May, July, and then October. But notice the, the down months were relatively light compared to the up months. The up months, we had a 26% in March. And by the way, the, the, the percentages here, they are referencing this unit size of 20,000. So if you wanted to know the dollar amount gained in March, then it would be the 26.94% times 20,000. Again, that's trading one unit. But of course, if you trade two units, the percentages are the same. So so the percentages are, are actually static. Again, since we're talking about live returns here, I do want to just uh, mention again that the risk of loss can be substantial. So keep that in mind. And of course, past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, these, these are showing a nominal account trading one unit. They don't take into account the fees that my company charges. Um, and then of course, this brief statement really can't cover all the risks associated with trading futures. And then finally, we're not, I'm not a CTA, I'm not a commodity trading advisor, we're a third, third party developer. So with that out of the way, um, I think that's enough on the swing trader, but it, bottom line is that this is a great algo. For someone that has 20,000, or, or if you have more and you're just looking for really high returns, the swing trader is, is one of the top algos that we offer. It's traded live for, for quite a while, um, you know, like I said, about three years now. Um, as of now, it, it's, it's been a little over three years. So it's been a great run with this algo. It's, it's, very, um, it's very robust in my opinion. There's always risk with any algorithm, but, but this one is, is pretty robust. Again, trades the momentum TY and the momentum ES. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the third algo. So we looked at the, the two swing trade algos, Momentum ES and Momentum TY. Now I want to show you the first day trade algorithm that we have. 
And what this will do is this will lead into the second system that I'll show you, which is the S&P Crusher. But the S&P Crusher trades the two we already discussed plus three day trade algorithms. This is the first of the day trades. So the hero state is a strong up. It does really well when, when the S&P closes up by 30 points or more for any given month. That it's, it's when it tends to do the best. This chart here just gives you an idea of, of what a really good trade might, might look like on this algo. So what it'll do is it'll buy into this, this strength. So if, you, if the market opens and has strength and the strength holds for about 20 minutes, then it'll buy into the market and throw a stop out immediately of about seven points on the S&P, which is pretty tight. That's only about $350. And that's, that's the advantage of this algo is that its, its win rate is, believe it or not, it's actually about 50%. So half the time it'll be a loss, but the other half it'll be a gain. Now the losses are usually pretty shallow. Like I said, $350, and it's, it's rare that it's more than that because we don't have to worry about gap down. This is a day trade. It, it's in and out the same day. And so if some bad news came out in the middle of the day, we would get stopped out. Now our fill might be bad, but, but we would still get out um, or more than likely we would get out unless everything just fell apart. But so this algo is relatively low risk compared to some of the other overnight systems that hold overnight. But what it'll do, like I said, it'll get in, throw out the stop of about $350 and then it'll hold the entire day. So what it's doing is it's looking for a really big trade. Um, and because the win rate is 50%, if we, you know, as long as we make more than on average $350 on the winning trades, then it's gonna be net profitable. Now this trade here, I don't have the actual total, um, but I could probably estimate just to give you an idea. So we, we bought it around, um, let's see, that would have been at around, I don't know, 230, uh, 32, and then got out at about 32.42. So we'll just call it about a 10 point gain. And each point is $50. So this would have been about a $500 gain on this trade right here. So again, we get in at the open and then we hold until the close and we get out at the close. It trades the S&P. Uh, and in, in case you're wondering, I've looked at all kinds of different ways to trade this algo. I've looked at uh, using trailing stops. We've looked at what if you hold overnight and it develops into a swing trade? And and there's that I just can't beat the way that the algo is coded. Um, the way it is now, I've not been able to beat it. Um, I've also looked at using a limit, uh, potentially getting out early. But what this will do is sometimes it'll have these huge trades. I mean, we've had 30 point gains on this algo before. And so again, it has a very low risk, um, a, a pretty tight stop. So if it's wrong, it, it gets out pretty quickly. But if it's right, It'll usually have a pretty good run, kind of like you see here. The other thing I'll mention just real quick, and then we'll move on to the next one, is that this algo is, is very difficult to trade. Uh, in other words, if you're a day trader, you tip a, most day traders I know, and this is how I was when I was a, a day trader before I got into algos, it's always hard to buy strength in the morning. Uh, it's a lot easier to short that emotionally, at least for me. Um, but this algorithm will buy into the strength. So it'll buy when the Dow's already up a ton or the S&P's up. And it always feels like we're buying at the top. But um, when this is a winning trade, it's usually when it turns into just one of these massive days. It also, even though the hero state is the strong up, I do have evidence as well that in a down moving market, it can do really well because it captures the short covering rallies pretty well. But on average, it's hero state is the strong up case. All right, so now let's look at the, first, the second day trade algo. This is our short day trade algo. And this is um, the fourth algo now that I'm showing you. And again, this is all leading into the S&P Crusher because the S&P Crusher again trades the two swing trades plus three day trades. And now we're on the second day trade. Its hero state, as you can imagine, is these strong down conditions where the S&P closes down four points or more is when this algorithm tends to shine. You could think of it as almost the opposite of the breakout long day trade algo. In other words, instead of uh, going long into strength, this one goes short into weakness. It's also emotionally very difficult to trade because you you have a big gap down like this most day traders want to buy that kind of move but this algo actually will go short into it and again i'm showing you a winning trade so i don't want you to think that every trade is like this a lot of times we do go short into the weakness and then we got stopped out 
That's okay um, because the, the stop is also relatively tight on this algo. It's not quite as tight as the 350. It's a little bit more than that. But what this algo is doing is it's holding to the close. So it's really looking for one of these massive down days where it, the, the, the market opens lower and then just sells off the entire day. Kind of like we saw here. Now, the other thing I'll mention is in bull markets, like we've had for the last few years where where everything just seems to constantly be going higher this algorithm will not have as many trades as you would expect you we don't you don't want a short algorithm to be shorting the market as it's going higher so um so it, it will trade more though when we go into a, a bear run or or even on a on an intermediate uh term the market starts to sell off. And, and we've had those in the last few years, you know, where the S&P is down for a couple months in a row or maybe even four months. Uh, I think we saw that in, uh, I believe, 2018. Um, this algorithm will start to trigger when that kind of market is is there. And, and it's not anything that I'm doing. So I don't look at it and turn it on when I think the market's going lower. It's, it's all technical. It's 100% algorithmic. So the code is actually looking at a few different indicators to know when to start taking the trades. And again, it goes short and then it gets out at the close. So it's very similar to the other one that we just looked at. It's lower risk because it's a day trade, meaning we don't have the overnight risk to worry about. We, we get in about 20 minutes after the market opens and then get out at the close and thus we're stopped out. So that's, that's the basics of this uh, day trade algo number four, which is a, the short algo. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the fifth day trade algo. And this, this is also in the S&P Crusher, and, and this is the last one in the Crusher. But So this is an interesting algo because it, it actually does well in strong down, but also in sideways markets. So it, it has a, a really high expectations in both strong down and sideways. And what it does is it's actually looking for strength in the morning, some kind of a gap up, followed by a few minutes of weakness, and it'll, it'll then go short. Now, this one is a little different than the other day trade algos because the stop that it uses is a little more flexible. It actually, instead of using a hard stop, it's looking at uh, some previous events to determine where to put the stop at. And then the limit order, and then it uses a limit order. So it's looking for a gain, um, and and once it hits the gain that it's looking for, it'll get out before the market closes. So the other day trade algos hold until the close, unless it's stopped out. This one will actually get out um, it, during the day once it hits its target. Now, if it doesn't hit the hit the target, then it'll just get out at the market when the market closes. So again, um, it, it's short the S&P. This is our, our fifth day trade algorithm and it's called the gap short. And it was developed a few years ago. Um, so it's, it's the newest day trade algo I have, but it, at this point it's traded live for quite a while. So, um, so really good algo, it's, it's, it's had a few good trades recently and it'll, it'll fluctuate. It'll, it'll take more trades than the other short algo because it'll actually trade during um, pretty much all market conditions. It, it'll potentially trade. It's not just looking for the more bearish conditions. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for the, for this algo though. And again, uh, these these three day trades that I showed you, number uh, algo three, four, and five, those are the the three day trades that we offer. They're in the Crusher, and then also they are in the Pro Trader. Okay, so the Crusher now takes the same two algorithms, the TY and the ES that we first looked at, and then it adds these three day trades that, that I just showed you, the two short day trades and then the long day trade. The returns on the Crusher are kind of in the middle. They're, it's, it's less than the swing trader, but more than the wave trader. So the returns are decent. The real strength in the Crusher though is the drawdown. The drawdown on the Crusher is actually the lowest of any algo that we offer on a percent basis. So what that means is if someone is mostly concerned about drawdowns, in other words, they, they just they don't really care about making a ton, they just don't want to go through all the emotional ups and downs and swings, then this would be one to consider because the drawdown is the lowest. It also has a win rate that is lower than the swing trader, but not horrible. The reason why the win rate goes lower is because of the day trade algos. So 
anytime you add day trade algorithms, um, it, it tends to drop the overall win rate. Um, because so, because like this day trade long yes it's got a 50 percent win rate and so it's going to drop the average overall um, now the trade-off though of course is there's less risk with the day trades which is why i think it helps contribute to the positive drawdown but it does trade five algos so if someone is also interested in just trading more um, algorithms to kind of diversify more then this is this is another one of the strengths the other big strength, similar to the swing trader, it's traded live since 2017, um, and so it's it's got a lot of history under um, a, lo a lot of live trades. Now the unit size is 30,000, so it is more than the swing trader, which was the 20,000 that I just showed you. But again, it has a small drawdown and a long trade history, so those are kind of the two key s strengths of it. Now, if you look here at the monthly performance, this is also a sum up performance. So again, I'm, the year to date is just adding all these. So what that means is it's not compounded. Keep that in mind. None of this is compounded. But notice in 2019, we had a really good year. Now, I feel like I really should mention also a little bit about 2018, because if you're looking at this, what you'll notice is that 2018, this algorithm took a beating. And if we go back to the swing trader, let me go back up, you'll notice that the swing trader also was down, but not quite as much. Um, and so I want to I want to talk about that a little bit. But what I want you to notice is notice in January on the swing trader, it had a great January, 24% in 2018. Okay, so let's go back down now, back to the crusher. And, and I think this will help explain why that uh, why the the loss is bigger in 2018. All right, the other th and, and I'll get to that, but the other thing I have to, I have to share is this algo is traded live again since, since February 2017. Um, when it first started, it actually had seven algorithms. It had the five that I just showed you, plus two more. The other two that it had were options algorithms. One was called the covered call algo, and the other was the iron condor. And those of you that have been with us for a few years or have been following us, you know exactly what I'm talking about because that those were two other options algos that we used to offer. And so this traded seven algorithms in 2017 and also in part of 2018. But what happened is those options algorithms, I ended up dropping them. So in other words, they never performed as good as I thought they should in the back test. And so I killed them. I, I dropped them. We don't offer them anymore. I, I stopped believing in them. And so I pulled them out of the crusher and I let people know. And we and we stopped offering the options algos. Now, the reason why it, you know, I could talk about that for a while. But in essence, the reason why is when you when you're in a quantitative trader, everything you're looking at initially is based on back testing, walk forward testing. It's all this big technical analysis that you're doing. And, it's, and it relies on having accurate numbers for what the S&P was trading at at various times, you know, in 2003, in 2007, etc. With options, it's really difficult to, to get the premium that options were trading at because they're, they're shorter term and, they, and, and the weekly options weren't even available at that time. So what you have to do is, is you have to estimate when you write an algorithm to try to use options, you have to... And the way I did it, I created a lookup table. I, I looked at the volatility, the VIX, and then I also, how many days till expiration. It was actually pretty complicated the way I did it. But in the end, it was just too difficult to, to, get, a good, um, to get good numbers for the back test. And I think that's, that's one reason why I lost confidence in the algos. But the other reason is they just didn't perform well. In fact, January of 2018, they did really bad. Um, and you can kind of see how it was down 8% in January of 2018. And remember, the swing trader was up 24%. So the difference between the crusher and the swing trader was about 32 percentage points, which is pretty big. Um, now you might say, well, well how do we know that wasn't the day trade algos that contributed that? Well, it, it wasn't. The day trade algos actually did decent. They might have been down a little bit, but they wouldn't have brought it down 32%. The reason why it was it was different by 32% is 
is because we got hit really hard on our iron condors and on our covered calls. Because January the, 2018, the market just rallied huge. And then it, then it began to sell off. So, so January was when I pulled the plug on it. Before that, they did decent, but not. they still weren't performing as good. The covered calls took away from the gains that we saw in 2017. Um, but I think that's, that's probably enough on that. I just wanted to at least explain the year to date. So basically around kind of the end of January I, is when I dropped the options algos from this package. And so everything from kind of February on is what we're trading now with these five algos. Um, and so you can see again, um, the performance in 2018, even if you drop out January was still down. So it was still down. But, but not quite as bad um, as, as the numbers show. Although, I mean, they were, it was bad, don't get me wrong, but I guess what I mean is part of that was due to these iron, a big part of it was due to the iron condor and the covered calls. Now, um, 2019 was amazing as, as these numbers show. So that was a, a good year where we ran 100% with these five algos without any changes to the package. But I just wanted to share with you uh, those those kind of data points so that you're aware. The other thing that tells you is that yes, we are, you know, I'm monitoring these things. If, if I ever see something where I lose confidence in them, I, I will take action. I mean, that, that's my responsibility as, as the developer. So just to summarize the crusher though, uh, small drawdown, long trade history. That's the big advantage. The returns are decent. Win rate is okay. Trades five algos. Um, but the big advantage is the drawdown. It's the lowest of any of the systems that we offer, even lower than the ProTrader. Um, and by the way, the reason why, and I'll, when we get to the ProTrader, I'll mention it again, is, is this only holds one ES overnight and one T, TY on a 30K account, where the ProTrader actually holds two ESs overnight, potentially in one tenure. And that, that's why this drawdown is lower than the, uh, than the ProTrader, which we'll get to now. So at this point, I've walked you through the 10-year note momentum algo, the momentum ES, and those two algos are the swing trader. Then I walked you through the three day trade algorithms. And if you take those three day trades plus the other two, that's the crusher. Well, the pro trader basically takes this last algorithm, this sixth algo, and adds it to the crusher, and that's the pro trader. Okay, So it's really not super complicated the way we do this. And in the design methodology uh, video that I'm going to be doing, um, I, I explain more on how how I do this. But in essence, what I do is I, I create trading systems by adding the different algorithms that, that we that I have together. All right. So what this algorithm does, though, is it is a it's called the Geronimo ES algo, and it was developed um, in kind of early 2019, late 2018. And then it went and it was last optimized kind of the end of January of 2019. But then it began trading live in actual accounts in, I believe, uh, March or April. I'd have to look again. But um, so it is a newer algo. Um, but what it is, is um, if you look at this bottom chart. That, so the only way I can really explain this, by the way, it does good in strong up, but also in sideways. Those are the two hero states. For this algo it does good when when the s&p closes up 30 points or more on from any given month or between negative four and positive 30 points which is that definition of a sideways state that i that i have here and again if you want if you want to know more about what i'm talking about here the design methodology video is the video you want to watch okay so what what this algo does though is it's very similar to the momentum es algo that was algo number two that i that i walked you through very similar to that one the diff so so it tr so this one trades on uh, 384 to 385 minute candles. This one is on 382 minutes, so it's very similar. It has two candles per day, and if you line it up, they they look very similar because they're almost exactly the same, but not quite. But what you'll notice is that this momentum ES algorithm on the bottom again, this is algo number two, the one that I showed you, the one that's in the swing trader, the crusher, and also in the pro trader, by the way. What the Geronimo does though, is it, it's very similar to this one, only it only takes the most high probability trades that the Momentum ES algo sees. And what, do I, what, I, what I mean by that is, um, 
you know, I've watched this algorithm trade live now for for actually over three years. Um, and what I there, there is something that I've that I noticed about a year. Well, really, probably six months into it, into this trading live, I started noticing it. But because the performance was so good on this algo, I never wanted to change it, even though I noticed there might be a way to do things a little bit better. Or that's what I thought. Well, at the end of 2018, I decided to finally do the big analysis and figure out if this change actually is good. Because what I thought is there's this thing that happens that allows us to escape these kind of stopouts that you see here and here. Um, and, I, and, and, and so what I thought is I'm going to make an update to this ES algo, assuming that, that the data shows that it is really better. Okay, so what I did is I did the analysis, and to my surprise, you could say, it was a little bit better in some regard, but the net profitability of this Momentum ES algorithm dropped by almost about half. But what I realized is that it does do a good job of avoiding a lot of these losses. In other words, the win rate of the Geronimo ES algorithm was higher than the win rate of the Momentum ES, but the returns were lower. Why were the returns lower? They were lower because, yeah, you miss out on some of these stopouts, but you miss all, you also miss out on some of these gains like you see right here. So what it does do, though, is it'll take these higher probability trades and usually get out quite a bit faster than this one on the bottom. And so when, when we have a rally start and, and we're not in the ES, this algorithm will start trading the ES. Usually this one, the Geronimo, We'll wait a few more days before it starts trading, and then it'll shut itself off a few days before this one stops trading. So in essence, there's fewer trades, but they're higher probability. So what I realized is that even though the win rate is higher, the returns are lower, and I didn't want to impose that on everyone by, by modifying the momentum ES algo. Instead, what I decided to do is just launch a sixth algorithm. And and so the last two packages I talk about use um, the TY plus the Geronimo plus some other algorithms, depending on which one we look at. But that's basically the Geronimo algorithm. It's, it's the higher probability trades. And because of that, it also does good in sideways, where the, um, the Momentum ES also does good in sideways. But this one actually does a little bit better just because there's fewer stopouts on it. But again, you know, nothing's perfect. There's, there's always risk in trading. So make sure you pay attention to the, the disclaimers that we have as well. Okay, so this is the final, well, it's not the final system, but it's, it's kind of the biggest system that we have. It's called the ProTrader. And it trades all the same algorithms that are in the Crusher plus this Geronimo ES algo. Now, because this Geronimo ES algo is new, I have to start the live returns when that account started trading it, which was in April of 2019. But the the kind of asterisk behind the returns is that five out of the six algos have traded live since 2017, and it's basically the crusher. But um, so keep that in mind too that these these other these algos are actually most of them have been time tested and, and have proven themselves to be really good algos. The Geronimo ES algorithm at this point now is has almost a year of live trades, and um, and so far the numbers say that it that it's doing what it was designed to do, and so my confidence is growing in the Geronimo algo as well. But if we look at the Pro Trader, what you'll see is that the returns are the highest, and it's so it's similar to the Swing Trader. The drawdown is is similar to the swing trader as well, actually a little bit uh, lower. So the drawdown is a little bit bigger on this algo, but the win rate ticks a little bit higher. That's because of the ES algo. Um, it has a high win rate. I, I believe the ES Geronimo is about eighty percent in the back test. Um, but but this this system trades six algorithms: the Momentum TY, ES Geronimo, and then the three day trades. It began live in 2019. I already talked about the asterisk, though, that a lot of the algos in it have traded live since 2017. But really, this, this one started in 2019. The unit size is also 30,000, so it's similar to the Crusher. Um, the biggest uh, strength to this algo, though, probably lies in the six algos. And so it has very high potential for returns. 
But one thing I do want to mention is the reason why the drawdown is not as good as the crusher, because remember the crusher has the best drawdown, and then you look at this one and it's just sort of 50, you know, kind of in the middle. The reason why is because there are times when we will be long two S&P contracts overnight, plus a 10-year potentially. And so that can cause a bigger drawdown if we're wrong on the ES trade. And so let me go up and I'll show you what, what I mean. If you notice all these trades, uh, we had some overlap here on the 13th of January. And this is actually 2020 that I'm showing, I believe, in here. Um, so in, in January uh, 13, 2020, this algorithm bought and got out. This algorithm also bought and got out. And then the same thing happened the next day, same thing the next day, same thing the next day. Notice how they look very similar. Well, those are winning trades, but imagine if, if this trade was a stop out, then this one would have got stopped out and this one would have got stopped out too. So it doubles the dollar amount of a loss when we're wrong, but only part of the time. Cause like in this case, even though the momentum ES got stopped out right here, we weren't in the Geronimo algo. So, you know, a, a few things have to line up for it to really hit as hard, but every once in a while they do. But I don't want you to think every time we get stopped out, we get double stopped out. That's because it's not the case. Here's an example where we had stopped out on the ES, but not on the Geronimo ES. All right, so going back to here, the year to date returns very high. This is also sum up. Um, notice June was huge, 30%, and that's on a 30K account. So in June, 30K account would have made about $9,000. August was pretty huge, November, December really good, uh, and then just a few losing months as well, May, July, and then October. And again, the, lose, the losing months on average are, are more contained, um, or they're smaller than, our, than how big our, our big up months are. But of course, there's risk. Uh, past performance is not indicative of future performance. I'm not a CTA, which means, again, that uh, none of this data is audited by the NFA. We're a third-party developer. So we can't give you personal advice, but, but we can show our algorithms the strengths and so that you're able to make a, a good decision. And if you have a financial advisor, we're happy to talk to them if, if they have questions. But I think that summarizes the pro trader. So really, we've looked at the swing trader, the crusher, the pro trader. Just so you know, most customers that have uh, 30,000 or more, they tend to gravitate to the pro trader or the crusher. Um, and then there's some that will gravitate towards a swing trader. There's also some that'll split it up and do some on the swing trader to try to get some of the high returns and then some on the pro trader. But if someone is just wondering, well, I have no idea which algo to use, then I recommend watch this video again and just focus in on the strengths of these algos because I can't really you know, guide you towards any one based on your unique situation. But I can give you all the data you need and, and help you get the data that you need to make, to make a good decision. But I, I just don't want you to think that we're able to give you advice or, or financial advice in any of this because we're not. You know, we're, again, I'm not a CTA. So, um, but we've got ton of data. You can always just look at the monthly performance to get an idea. Remember, these are percentages based on the unit size. Um, so, uh, but yeah, the swing trader is really popular and so is the pro trader. And then the, the reason why the crusher isn't quite as popular as the pro is most people are just after returns. And so they're not as worried about the drawdown. But again, if, if drawdown's a big deal for you, then, then the crusher would probably be the one to look at. Um, I think that's it for the pro trader though. It's it's a great algo. It's at this point, it's almost got a year of live trades and it's really beginning to prove itself. The Geronimo ES algo, this new one that, that we launched has really been doing what it was designed to do. Um, I, I actually was really impressed that it is able to get out in these kind of situations. Cause before, you know, we'd watch this chart, see the, the few stop outs and I'd always have in the back of my mind, you know, if, if, if this algo turned itself off when this when a certain event happens which obviously i can't share because it's some of the the secret sauce of the algos but um we would be much better off and so it's been doing what it's designed to do um but we we do need a little bit more time so that it can get some more trades under its history okay so there's one final system that we have and that's the wave trader the wave trader the reason why i'm doing it last is because it's the only one that doesn't 
continue to build on the previous algos. So the reason why I did the swing trader, then the crusher, and the pro trader is because you start with our two basic algos, the, the momentum TY, momentum ES, that's the swing. You add the three day trades, that's the crusher, and then you add the Geronimo, and that's the pro trader. Well, the wave trader is sort of a step back. It's actually more, more related to the swing trader than the other ones. Really, the only difference is it swaps out the momentum ES with the Geronimo ES. So it's similar to the swing trade. It's just got that different uh, overnight ES algo in it. And so because of that, again, we have to start with April, even though the 10 years traded live for uh, quite a while, um, actually even before 2017, because it, it was launched in um, early 2015 and kind of later in 2014 is when it was developed. But I don't want to get off, off topic. The, the Wave Trader is the 10-year note algo plus the Geronimo ES algo. If you look at its highlights, the strength of it is the win rate. Um, the only reason why we even offer this or I offer this is because it does have a higher win rate than the other algorithms. The returns are lower than the swing trader and the drawdown actually is bigger than the swing trader, which I know is is kind of weird to look at, but because you would think the drawdown would be lower. It's actually um, a little bit higher. The reason why is because um, because there are a few sequences where it does get stopped out and then some of the big gains the swing trader had, it didn't have. And so it, and some of those just sort of added together in a weird way to cause the drawdown to be bigger. But that's really, um, yeah, so it, it trades two algorithms that began live 2019. It's got a 20K unit size. So the monthly performance is right here. You can see it. It's also sum up. And you, you can see, I mean, the, the year-to-date performance, 34% versus the swing trader, which is um, at least double that. So it does have lower returns. But the big advantage is emotionally a little bit easier to trade than the other ones only because you're going to have more winning trades than losing losing trades. The Geronimo ES algo is, I think it's got, a, it's about an 80% win rate in the back test at least. And in the live, I think it's been close to that, if not better potentially. And then the Momentum TY also has a pretty good win rate. So you add those together and it's, it's just, it wins a lot. Um, but the gain, when it wins, it wins usually a smaller amount. So the average gain per trade is a little bit lower. But emotionally, it's it's sort of easier when you're just sort of winning more often than losing. So that's that would be what this algorithm might be helpful for. All right, well, now I'd like to just briefly summarize all the different systems that I walked you through. I, I started with the Swing Trader. That's this one right here. Really good returns, pretty good uh, drawdown, fairly high win rate. Algo's traded a little bit lower too. Uh, well, it is the, the lowest, that in the wave. Began live in 2017, and the unit size is 20K. And you can see why this algorithm is, is one of the more popular ones we have. Then I, I walked you through the three day trades, which add to that. That gives you the crusher. And what that does, it lowers the return some because now you've got to have a 30K uh, unit size. So the gains from the swing trades are smaller as a percentage of the 30K. But it does add the day trades, which help offset that. It, it does have the lowest drawdown. The win rate is a little bit lower but it do, because of the day trades, but it does trade five algos and it also began in 2017, so it's got a good trade history. Unit size is 30K on that. The pro trader is the next one. It adds the wave trader, has really high returns. The win rate is fairly high um, and the algos trade is six, but it began live in 2019. And then last algo, and the pro trader is probably the second more popular one. The last algo is the Wave Trader, and it has a high win rate, and it began in 2019 as well. Two algos are traded. The returns are the lowest of all the algos, but the win rate is really high. So as we're closing the video, I, I do want to just add the risk disclosure, and feel free to pause this if you if you want to read it. Um, just remember that, that trading futures does involve significant risk of loss. There's a large potential for gain, but also a large potential for loss. Remember that we, we provide trading algorithms based on computerized system, which means it's also available for use on a personal computer. Everyone gets the same signals within a, any given package. So in other words, we don't give any, adv any advice that's personal to you. It's not tailored to you. It's, it's simply an algorithm that other people are trading independent of what your unique situation might be. 
Finally, we're not registered with the NFA's CTAs and we're publicly claiming this uh, self-executing exemption from registration. And lastly, just remember that the data that we provide, because we're not registered, it's not been reviewed by any government agencies. Uh, this includes any back-tested report statements, any marketing material that we have. And then finally, uh, in most cases, the, the, the results that we show does not include the one-time fee that we charge or the maintenance fee. All right, well, I really do hope that the presentation was helpful for you. And I just wanna end by adding just this contact us slide. So feel free to email us at sales at algorithmictrading.net. You can also give us a call, the 1-800 number. It's 866-759-6546. Of course, our website, algorithmictrading.net, and you can, you can visit us on the web. We have plenty of data on the website to include past performance, the live returns. Uh, you can fill out a demo request form. Really, most anything that you want to see or that you need to hear from us about, we're, we're able to provide that for the most part. So feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, and thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.